What's your communication preference style? You see, every single one of us has a preferential communication style, but do you know which one it is and how it compares to the style of others? Let's dive into it. So, there are four primary styles of communication. Style one, rational. Style two, structural. Style three, expressive. And style four, visual. So, if your preference communication style is style one, rational, you will often use logic, key facts, or statistics. You use simple words to express complex ideas and you like to build in knowledge and credibility into your content. You typically like very specific language and you dislike vague language. I'm going to give you an example. Okay, when someone tells you sales are positive, you're likely to think, what does positive mean? 4.2% or 9.8%. Give me a number. If you're a rational communicator, you'll often have little patience for lots of feeling and emotional words in communication. One advantage of having a rational communication style is that because you like communication to be fairly unemotional, you're often able to look at issues logically and dispassionately. This means that others tend to see you as having high levels of data and informational expertise. Now, the potential downside of having a rational communication style is that others may perceive you as cold or disconnected. This is particularly the case when you're interacting with people who are a style three, expressive communicators, who value warmth and meaningful connections over data and facts. If you're a style two communicator, this means that your preference is to be structured. And as a result of this, you'll often put a high emphasis on the overall flow and structure of an email or a presentation. You pay particular attention to how the layers of details are put into the communication and the way the language is constructed, including grammar. One big advantage of having a structured communication style is that your communication often includes all the details and nuances and nothing gets left out. If you're part of a team, people will often turn to you to be the implementer because they have the confidence in your love of process and detail. And because you're focused on process and details, you're also really good at taking the role of playing devil's advocate. Now, the potential downside of being a style two is that you may risk losing the attention of your audience, especially when you're talking to style three expressive and rational communicators. They are often the big picture people who skip to the end and don't really like getting bogged down in too much detail. Style three, the expressive communicator. As an expressive communicator, you value emotional language, connection and place a high value on how you deliver a message. Style three have the highest level of awareness of their voice and physical presence. As you like to build rapport and connect with others, you use that as your mode of discovering what others are really thinking. Style three communicators tend to be diplomatic and also really good listeners. One big plus of being an expressive communicator is that your communication allows you to build meaningful relationships with others. As you're in tune with your intuition, you're typically able to pick up signs that others may miss because you're attuned to the emotional aspect of communication. Now, the potential downside of having an expressive communication style is that you may occasionally perce be perceived as touchy-feely and not credible to style, two, uh, style one rational communicators who prefer to talk about data. The final communication technique cluster is style four visual. Now, my experience is that this is a style that is very common amongst my architecture, advertising and creative agency clients. It's architects and creatives who often see the visual technique as their preference style. And as you can probably guess, the visual communicator will include lots of visuals and images, as well as metaphors and symbols. They'll often use statements such as, I imagine, not I think or I feel or I know, but I imagine, and that's because they're visual people. The downside of being a visual communicator is that you may lack the communication capacity for sufficient details and concreteness. My observation is that creatives and particularly architects often overuse visual images and tell rather than connect with the audience. 
So in summary, it's important to understand that no one communication style is inherently better than the other. Rather, it's about whether you have the necessary flexibility to stretch yourself to tap into all of them. That is the definition of someone who has true communication intelligence. So as an exercise, have a think about what your communication preference style might be. If you resonated strongly with one style above the other three, then it might be a good time for you to reassess how you can build your skills across the others. If you'd like to better understand your own communication preference style, the advantages and disadvantages, and become more skilled across the others, then get in touch with me via LinkedIn or send me an email to chloe at coconsultancy.com.au. I look forward to connecting with you.